you, uh, Vanessa and Albert and uh, Well, it, I, I'm terribly sorry. I feel guilty having to bring it to an end today because we, we are just getting into the uh, heart of, of many problems. And certainly the, the logistic problems of NGOs, the uh, problems of, of where you can live uh, are very, very important within Europe. FIAN is go hopefully going to be starting very soon uh, a major project looking at data, medical data, data protection and flow of data uh, as something very important for the, uh, for the European Union. Alfred, thank you. you. You have given yourself a great uh, preview for the Paris meeting. And uh, if you wish to go to that meeting, please see Alfred and he will give you the details at the French Academy. Well, uh, I, I, I'm not going to be long, I promise you, but I, I do want to bring out some of the really salient points that, that, that I have picked up myself uh, from this, this meeting, which I think has been excellent. The first thing was from John Ryan from the EU. He, he was very clear from the point of view of managing from a big organisation like the EU, this is very complex. And he talked about the large amount of money which is being spent, 16 billion euros. Now, in fact, most of that is going on border control. And I spoke to him at coffee and he said, uh, George, you must have worked out how much is going to help from the uh, numbers that I gave. And in fact, it's very little of that 16 billion which is going on health. It's border control, which is the important thing that EU have. And, and that's, of course, important, um, but it means the member states are having to pick up the, uh, the health care uh, uh, bills. It's very interesting to hear from the World Health Organization, um, from uh, Santino. They have some very good, clear documents about what the WHO, uh, the World Health Organization, stance is on migrant health, on uh, refugee health, and so on. And, and she, she drew out the difference between a migrant and a refugee. Now, just going back for a last time on finance, you remember the histograms that were shown of uh, in, immigra immigration into Europe rapidly falling over about a five-year period to a small number at the moment. And I asked John in, in the coffee time what had caused that. And he smiled and laughed and he said, we gave Turkey a lot of money to make migrant camps. And that was the reason for that big fall. And of course, we now have a problem in Turkey with the invasion of the Kurds and, and these camps for the, for the migrants. But nevertheless, that set the scene for what we were going to be discussing later on. The other points that came out to me were that mental health is, is absolutely crucial, without the slightest doubt. And it's now established that mental health in mobile groups is, is very, very important for their future. And women with small children are particularly vulnerable. And single parent family, three children, living in one room. Um, I, I honestly don't know, having had three children myself, how they possibly do this. So we have to think of special groups within the, the migrant population. The other thing which I knew about but came out very dramatically was the, the challenge of violence. None of us in this room are violent. We would avoid violence, but imagine if we were being subjected to violence, both physical and psychological, as part of this miserable uh, journey that we were undertaking. Uh, it, it is so senseless when you think about it, but it's part of the human nature. Rape was very important, and uh, Xavier didn't talk about the number of pregnancies, but I'm sure there must have been pregnancies from this large number, and these poor women what they were having to do uh, in that situation is terrible. Healthcare costs are clearly reduced if you have a general healthcare system. And my experience of healthcare systems, certainly in the UK, is if you want to bring in something new, you have to say, this is going to save money. 
and this is a, an ace that there is here. If there is general health care, uh, general practitioner level uh, and so on, you will be saving hospital uh, money. Ibrahim, uh, uh, from uh, uh, leading the Lancet, uh, was very convincing that there's xenophobia, which is a terrible misconception of course, and that collective humanity, as I've mentioned, is, is the essence strategically of what's needed. And then Manuel talked to us about travel, that travel was the problem and the challenge. It wasn't the migrant, it was people travel and they pick up uh, all sorts of interesting diseases to uh, me as an infectious disease physician. But this is the problem. Migrants themselves uh, are not the essential part of that problem. And that's been echoed all the way through actually. But migrants by and large are young and they're relatively healthy. But what they do when they get to the country of their destination is they acquire the diseases of that population that they are joining. Very interesting study that I know about in Amsterdam at the moment were the immigrant uh, population. Uh, the children are suffering from really quite advanced obesity and we know this will lead to type 2 diabetes and all the miseries of, of obesity. There's a very simple study going on when, where the migrant shops have removed from by the tills and in most of the counters sweets. So these children don't just buy a bar of chocolate or sweets when they leave with the odd euro that they've got. And uh, the epidemiologists in Amsterdam are following these children to see if they're actually losing weight and losing their tendency for, for type 2 diabetes. Another thing that we haven't talked about in much detail is climate change. Now climate change we associate with the Sahara and we heard Xavier talking about death in the sand. Uh, a dreadful thing to think about. Um, climate change. Look at Australia at the moment. Burning. Animals dying because they haven't got enough water. Water is the new oil. And countries need water to grow crops, to feed animals and to, and to use. So it's climate change which is going to be very, very important, but it's provision of water within that that we must think about. Then at the end we started thinking about NGOs, are they good or bad and do they take uh, opportunity from governments and healthcare systems? Very, very interesting and difficult question. Nobody has med mentioned Médecins Sans Frontières today. Uh, an incredibly uh, good organisation in, in my view. Uh, but they would come into this discussion uh, very well. The other dominant thing that came out to me strategically was that Europe needs migrants. We need migrants because we are not keeping our population going. Now for Europe, read Japan. We all know what's happening in Japan at the moment. So we should be embracing migrants rather than uh, treating them with xenophobia and, and, and contempt as, as has been happening. And it's not just border control. Of course that is important, uh, but border control serves to do logistics. Now what else is needed? Well, I'm going to mention two things and I'm going to finish. The first thing is we need longitudinal data to what is happening to migrants who settle in European countries. What happens to them? What happens to their language? What happens to their uh, education, which is the last thing I'm going to talk about? What happens to their health? What contribution do they make to the country uh, that they're in? So we mustn't just say, right, you've got your ticket, you've got your card, uh, that's it. Uh, we've got to try and help and we've got to see what happens to them. Now, I have to make a conflict of interest statement. My daughter is a primary school teacher in a very deprived area in London. Mixed race, single parent families, families uh, with parents in jail. Education, education, education. Tony Blair, uh, our now infamous Prime Minister, said this. Did nothing about it, of course, but this is and must be the key. Uh, we, to educate the young properly, 
uh, in when they arrive, language we've heard about, uh, that it, to educate them properly, to educate the older people who haven't had proper education about health uh, and about the countries uh, they're living in. Um, this has been a great meeting, it's opened my eyes to, to many things and I, I thank all, all the speakers very much and looking forward to Paris as well, uh, Alfred. Vanessa, thank you. And of course to the Academy, which is just uh, magnificent. Uh, thank you, uh, Pierre and uh, Jean, uh, Michel, for being such wonderful hosts and allowing us to, to be here. So the meeting is now over. Come to Paris. Uh, it will be a great meeting. And thank you very much for staying to the end. <laughs>